express how we just happened to be on a server one day and you know we had to edit an nginx configuration file. <coughs> well you know Vim was just there and before I knew it I was using it at work when my colleagues weren't looking. <laughs> um, so yeah it is a talk about Vim. And um, we had, you know, for balance, we had a talk, very, very good talk yesterday from Chris Cohen, who was in the talk about PHP Storm. Brilliant. Okay, so I suppose, you know, this is the other side of it. This is, um, uh, I suppose, an argument. I'm, I'm pro-BIM. I've been using BIM for quite a few years. Um, but, you know, I want to say almost in the same breath that I'm not looking for converts. So there's certainly not going to be an altar call at the end where you can come forward and receive the BIM blessing and, and go forth and spread the word. I don't mind what you use, you know, let me say that right at the start, because there's a lot of arguments about, you know, text editors versus text editors, and I don't want to get into all that. Um, so, you know, uh, be comfortable with what you're using. I hope that if you take anything away from the talk today, it will be that you see something that I do in BIM and think, oh, I, you know, that's a really efficient way of navigating or whatever. Um, I need to go home and I need to find out how to do that uh, in whatever editor you've chosen. So, um, so that what's on my next slide. So yeah, my um, you can't see this very well at all. I don't know if there's any way of improving this. Does anybody know how they can turn the brightness up? Extra marks if you can get all the film references here as well. You can tell what some of my favourite films are, it's not helping is it? Um, but yeah, the, the talk title is just a reference to the, the fact that Vim has a bit of a, uh, a reputation for being, you know, for those who are unacquainted, shall we say, um, a bit difficult to get out of. Uh, and on the other, the other side of that is uh, Vim also has a bit of a reputation for being difficult to get into. Uh, so I've got a hard sell. Um, but I maintain that you know, if you're willing to learn the basics, then you'll soon realise that what you have with Vim is a power tool. You know, and I think the problem is, is that people give up, you know, they try it, and they give up after like, you know, like seven years or something, you know, and go back to the text that they used before. And you've really got to stick at it, you know, and uh, eventually you get to the top of the mountain and you get a wonderful view. Um, but no, I, I think, you know, if you learn the basics, you kind of, you know, if you come to the foot of the mountain, seeing sort of what the view might be like from the top inspires the climb. So um, it doesn't happen overnight, and I, I'm by no means an expert, so I'm just going to show you the things that I do every day that um, keep bringing me back to Vim when I try other editors. So uh, the first thing I want to say about Vim, and the thing that keeps me coming back to Vim after I've tried uh, editors like PHP Storm and NetBeans and things like that, is, is for me Vim is so beautiful. There's a little moth here, you can't see it. Um, but, uh, Vim is such a beautiful editor to me. Um, and so I think if I've got this right, uh, without further ado, I'm going to... Now, now I, will this be the first time anybody has actually seen Vim? You can put your hand up if you've not seen Vim before. So most of you know what you're in for. The visual treat, you know, the visual in, you know, stimulation can be a bit too much for people, so you know at this point, you know if you want to sort of cover your eyes and just peer through your fingers, um, it won't start like that. Here's Vim. Now, I, actually, what I can do, and you tell me whether this is better or worse. Is that any better? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see, I've got a line number up here. I've got some stuff down here now. Appreciate some people that might be too much going on there. So what we can do is we can turn the line numbering off. Um, oh, I'm panicking already. I'm typing at an angle, it's quite a strange thing. Um, so got rid of my line numbers. Now this stuff down here, this is um, this is the ruler. It tells me which line and which column I'm on, and whether I'm seeing the whole document or just the top of it, the bottom of it, or the percentage. Uh, where my cursor is relative to the top and bottom of the document. So we can get rid of that fella as well. We set no ruler. But while I'm on the way to setting no ruler, I just wanted to show you that Vim Auto completes uh, the commands at the bottom here. We're in command mode. 
come on to modes in a minute. Um, so very, some very interesting commands available. Uh, I quite like um, this one, somewhere I can't see. I just like this one. <laughs> more. <laughs> more! Whatever you're doing, I just want more of it. For <laughs> and then there's magic. I'm assuming this is good magic, not bad magic. Um, Maybe it accepts an argument. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we can, uh, we can auto complete and just, I'm just tabbing. I, I did look at, um, I do apologise, I did look at these programs for showing the keys that I'm typing. And um, unfortunately, with the latest update from Apple, uh, the one that I did have that was working was reasonable. Um, it doesn't work anymore. It just shows you the modifier keys. But when we get, you know, when we get to bit where it's now, I try and shout out what keys I'm pressing if, it, if it's not obvious on screen. Now I'll turn that ruler fellow off. Um, and so what we've got down here, these little tilde marks are really helpful because they tell us that what we've got over here is an empty line. I mean, you know, I'm glad they're there. Uh, else I'd be a bit confused about what I was looking at here. But we, I don't think you can actually turn those off, but you can make them the same colour as the background. <laughs> and eventually, you know, you get to a point where... Oh, there we are. I'm now I'm happy, right? Um, so, if you haven't got the message yet, Vim is uh, distraction-free by default uh, editor. So here... Um, I've got the whole screen, I've, I'm, I'm zoomed in here obviously, I've, I've got the full screen on iTerm, I'm in the terminal. The whole screen is available for code. Um, so this is one of the things that for me, you know, I can't stand having you know, my, my sort of editor window open and then if there's like um, a website with some ads or something going on behind it, I just find I just can't abide it. It's, you know, um, I have to have like a a oneness, you know, also enter into a trance-like state with uh, the code and the kind of get to a place. Um, so anyway, that's distraction-free Vim. So I'm going to actually just get out of Vim. Um, so I want to talk about uh, modes in Vim. Um, so this is a scene from. Does anyone know which film this one is? Moonraker. Right, very well done. <laughs> I, I didn't know. That. Uh, but of course, this is Q giving James his uh, one of his gadgets, and it's a pen. I think I can't remember what the you know whether you had to click it three times or something, and it turns into a gun. Um, is that right, <laughs> Eli? Do you have any authority on that? <laughs> that's a, that's a golden knight. Oh, a golden knight. All oh, right. So uh, oh, Lewis, we should be listening to you. So what was this? <laughs> Anyway, so you get the idea that this pen has at least two modes that we know of, maybe more. Um, and so, you know, if you've uh, used Vim, you'll know that if you, 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 you launch Vim, unless you pass a particular set of arguments in, you will uh, launch in what is known as normal mode. Okay? And, you know, if you type away, you'll find that the thing will happen unless you press one of the special keys which takes you into insert mode. So this is where you know Vim gets its you know sort of power from. It, one of the ways that it's, uh, uh, gets its power from is that, that the keys do different things in different modes. Now that might sound absolutely bonkers. Why would you use an editor that you have to actually start typing something to actually start typing something? It does sound bonkers, I must admit. But stay with me. There's power there. So. Uh, starting Vim. Now the trouble with choosing, uh, you know, images from films for your slides is you you, you have trouble choosing between uh, all of the great films that you love. So I, I, you know, why, why choose? <laughs> Just put them all in. Uh, I only have two for this one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so starting Vim. So I find that I start Vim in different ways. Um, I know, you know, maybe some of us rock up to work in the morning. We open up. A project, and we work on that project all day and close it down. But I find myself sort of leaping between files and working in a, in a, in a bit more fluid way, I guess, than that. Um, so I wanted to show you some of the ways that you can uh, start Vim. Um, so here we go. So you've seen me start Vim by just typing Vim. Okay. Um, but if I just show you where I am, I'm sort of in the root of the Drupal 8 um, code base, and so I can I can start Vim and I can. Pass the file again, 
avert your eyes if it's too much visual impact for you. Um, now, what we're seeing here. So we're seeing the index file, and some of my colleagues have been trying bin out and uh, have put in um, a bit of a mistake here. So this is perhaps one of the downsides of bin. You know, you can very quickly get to a place that you didn't intend to get to, you know, by pasting in the contents of another file or something like that, or, you know, in your efforts to get out of BIM, can you still, can you read this? Shall I make it? Is that any better? Okay. So, in, you know, in your efforts to get out, you know, if you leave a file like, uh, uh, or, a, a, you know, uh, you're trying to write the file there, um, you know, it causes a fatal error. Um, and something that I saw yesterday in Chris Cohen's talk was he had um, PHP Storm rigged up with uh, PHP Code Sniffer. So um, I went away last night. I hadn't uh, sort of seen that in BIM before. And sure enough, there's a, there's a way of doing it. And um, so this is telling me, uh, this, this window at the bottom is telling me that I've got a PHP pass error, uh, syntax error, unexpected colon on line 14. So I can, I can fix that by pressing D, and then I can colon write that. Okay, so that's starting Vim and opening up a single file. Now, imagine that scenario, that same scenario, if you just, you know, gone to that particular website on the development server, and it's showing a fatal error, um, it would show something like this. Okay. So it's giving you information about the problem, and um, it's telling you that there's a, there's a, uh, a syntax error on line 14. Now, it should be fine if I refresh the page. This is a screenshot, but you get the idea. But um, so what you can do is you can tell Vim, and you can do this, I know you can do this stuff in, in other text editors. You can tell Vim that I want to go to, I want to launch a file and go to a particular line number that's causing problems. I say, so this is my clever bash script. <laughs> put the error back in the file for me as I progress the slides. Um, bit too, uh, so there we go. So um, it's exactly the same thing as you saw before. Okay, so um, opening Vim and going to a specific line in a file, that might save some time. Um, so let's just, uh, let's go from here to uh, themes. No, 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 let's actually go core themes and into the 17. Now, um, in here, uh, there's a number of CSS files. Uh, I'm sorry I can't easily change the background here, but you can see we've got edit CSS and install pages.css. And so, you know, if you're a themer, this is uh, something for Lewis and other themes here. Um, you can tell Vim that you want to just open up the CSS files in this directory. And it will open up um, all those five files. Uh, here we go. I'll set the background again. I can fix this actually. Just bear with me one second. Um, <coughs> if I change this to white, then it should uh, put out the zoom. And open up those files again. There we go. So um, it's opened up those five files. Now, um, being a distraction free nerd, those five files are there, um, but I actually type colon ls to show me them. And then I can move around between them by typing colon b, b for buffer. It's the name that BIM uses for describing files that are loaded in memory. And I can, uh, I can say so, I can go to um, vertical tabs. And, and flip between the files by colon B. And this is a bit of a pain on the Mac because you've got to find the hash key. Mm -hmm. Max. Um, but you can flip between the files, and then and then I can just literally, you know, go between them between the two there. I'll show you splits a bit later on. Something I'm sure that you probably have in your current text editor. But I think um, I've got something a bit different when it comes to splits to show you a bit later on. Um, and what I like to do when I find CSS like this, I mean, Matt and James at Code Enigma, I haven't even said who I am, have I? My name's Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's been a long weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, and I work with a wonderful bunch of people called Code Enigma, who do hosting and consultancy. We build Drupal websites and, uh, and platforms. Um, yeah, and, and Matt and James at Code Enigma love it when I fix their CSS. Um, so here, I'm going to just select these lines of CSS. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with the CSS? I mean, to me, it's... Is it the order? Exactly. So I can just exclamation mark, sort, and order them. And I feel much happier, and so do my fellow themers, when I you know, <coughs> commit this. How did you actually select those lines? So, oh sorry, this is where. So, uh, shift and V to get into visual line mode. And then I'm using uh, the J key to navigate down. <laughs> or, or, so uh, let's go back to, so if I want to go to line five, let's cover some real basics. Sorry, navigation's coming later, but um, uh, if I want to go to five, I press five and capital G. So I can get to a specific line within the document very quickly and easily. So shift and V will select the line that I'm on. And then I can, you know, rather than use the arrow keys or pick up the mouse, uh, I can say, well, okay, I want to select a line 10. So I press 1, 0, and G, and it takes me and selects those lines. Okay, and then it's a case of um, typing colon to go into command mode, and then exclamation mark sort. I appreciate you probably can't see this at all, can you? But this is a colon and sort down here. Um, so that, that <coughs> puts it in order. Um, You're not going to leave the rest of them. Well, you know, yeah, we could. Uh, now, getting out of BIM, just while we're here, um, if I wanted to save those changes, I would colon um, W, which would write them. Um, or if I just want to get out, I'm not too concerned about saving those changes. I can quit all five files in one go. So I've got here, I've got colon Q, A for all, and then exclamation mark, which is like a pseudo of BIM in terms just do it. <laughs> and that will get me out of BIM. Um, so I think probably those are <coughs> maybe the two or three ways I will go from a standing start um, in, you know, in terms of opening files. But let me show you how um, I will work with projects. Um, so if I CD, uh, what is it, CD minus will take me back to uh, the root of Drupal. So if I just vim here, um, I use a thing called Command T, which is a, a plugin. Uh, I don't normally launch it like this. And you can see it's problematic for me. Um, but what this does is, it's usually a bit quicker than that, <laughs> um, but it brings up a list of the whole files in the project. And, and what we've got down here is, um, so say for example, I wanted to find the node controller. Um, if I start typing node, you can see the list of files uh, begins to get more um, aligned around what I'm looking for. Um, and I can I can say, well, okay, I want to find node in the modules directory. So I can MO. So it's kind of like a fuzzy search. And then I can just start put node controller in there. And can you see it? I think it's, it's just there. So. Um, and I use this for quickly sort of moving around between files in a project, you know, rather than sort of opening up folders, um, the whole thing, having that side by level with project files, I find distraction. And Sublime Text has got a nice way of doing this. I think it kind of pops down a, a little window. I like, I like that. Um, so the kind of things that you, you'd expect to see in um, more sort of be considered more traditional editors are things like being able to get down onto controller base and just quickly jump to the definition of that class. And um, so Vim has this, so again I'll, I'll shout the keys out, so I'm typing 19 capital G to get me from the top of the file to line 19. Now at this point I could use the right arrow, um, I could use the L key to go along, or I could use W to go across in words. I can go back with B 
or I can actually go use E to go to the end. Can you see the difference? It's going to the end of the word rather than the beginning of the word. So getting around inside of you know maybe a long line of code um, is uh, there's some some you know some goodness there I think. Um, so if I you know if I just go to controller base and if I hit control and the right square bracket that will load up the abstract class controller base and then control zero will take me back to where I've just come from tab will take me forward control and zero will take me back and you can just flip between um, you know where you're working on stuff we'll get to splits in a minute you know you probably with a big monitor have lots of windows open lots of splits open so um, there we go. Any questions at this point? Anything you've seen that's not been cleared? All these slides oh, three already, one. sorry. <laughs> Jane, do you want, I think you're handing um, it How does it know that it's a PHP file? Is it because of the extension or the PHP stuff <coughs> itself? Good question. So I'm in a, um, <coughs> this file is uh, a PHP, it's got the PHP extension, so it will know that it's a um, PHP file and, and, and um, Highlight it, use the right syntax highlighting. Um, but what I have in my, this is my BIM configuration file. Um, and what I have, if I search for, so this is searching in BIM, by the way, while we're here. So another distraction free thing that I like, you know, I hate that thing where you pop up a big dialog box and you've got all these options of searching and replacing text. Um, you know, just forward slash, I don't have to pick up the mouse, I hardly have to move my keys, move my fingers off the home row. So if I, I'm looking for something called all group, and so this is um, there's a page. It's in the resources slide that I have right at the end um, for setting up BIM for Drupal. Um, it, this is basically BIM language for saying when I open a file which ends in uh, a .module extension, um, behave like it's a PHP file. So so you can you can um, tell BIM that all the sort of kind of uh, extensions that we use, so .module, .theme, these are not sort of specific to Drupal, but <coughs> treat them as PHP files. Does that, does that answer your question? I think Jan, I think you have a question. Are these slides going to be available on the internet later? Yes, yes. And uh, I have something else that you might be interested in, but I'll come to that at the end. Um, and, is it great? Uh, yeah, it just uh, quickly you mentioned that the file list project files was a separate application. Uh, how do you go about installing that? Okay, um, so the um, the easiest way is to um, to keep your get, get your um, BIM configuration in Git and use Git submodules. So a lot of um, the plugins for BIM, very much like Drupal, in that um, BIM is a basic. Thing, you know, they're very, very powerful, flexible, but you know, just like Drupal, there's usually a module to do whatever, you know, to add functionality, and it's, it's exactly the same thing, but in a good way. Um, so if you keep your BIM configuration in Git, um, you can add um, the various bundles, plugins, as sub-modules, and um, I've also got a link to my files on GitHub, which I'll show you how to do it. Um, Okay, any, anything else or should I move on? Okay. Um, so, what's next? Um, so navigation, we've covered a bit. Um, I like to think that this was a small canyon and they made it and they drove off and uh, was happy after. But, you know, I get lost all the time and, um, you know, uh, I like the way that BIM has I've shown you some of those things just now, really, moving around in files. Um, so I'll probably, probably uh, skip on to other slides. So, you know, I've already talked about the mouse and how we all love the mouse, right? And it is useful for finding things, but it's, some, it's not, no, not always the most efficient way of getting around when, you know, you can um, move around in BIM with, you know, you're keeping your keys on the home home run, you know, without reaching for the mouse or even reaching for the arrow keys, to me is sort of, you know, losing focus. I just want to stay in tune with what I'm trying to do, get to the right line, edit, and finish what I'm doing. 
So, you know, uh, maybe we should let Snowbell finish the mouse off. Um, so, stopping Vim, uh, go next, uh, and stopping Vim. There should be, yeah, so getting off the bus. Um, so there's lots of ways of getting out of Vim to answer the, you know, the, the talk title, how do I quit Vim? So if we, if we have Vim uh, index open, um, I can, so I can do some, some things. I can just press, uh, what we have down here is colon quit, uh, q for quit. Uh, now if I've made an edit to the file, uh, say for example, I've gone to line 10 and I've just put in some stuff. Um, I have a, another plugin called Git Gutter. I don't know if you can see this stuff here, but it's telling me that I've made some additions to the file. It would show a, a tilde key if I've made some edits to a line. If I've removed some lines, a little red minus thing. So um, I quite like that. I don't consider that too much of a distraction. Um, but if I try and quit out of here, oh, I can. Did I save it? You didn't save it. I didn't save it. So if I've made some edits. Uh, 11, G, put another line in. And if I quit, it will tell me that I've not made it right. So it kind of gives me some information. It's a little bit scary. I maybe should tone down the color of this. Um, but yeah, it tells me that I can add uh, an exclamation mark to override to get out of BIM, or I can write the file, uh, which is just um, colon W. Now what I can do, which I, sometimes I use this, this, this a bit, so if I want to, for example, I'm a little bit old school, right? And I know we have version control, um, but say for example, you know, you can do some nice things in Vim where you can just say, I want to save this portion of the file away. Um, so I can press colon to go into command mode and type 17, beginning of this try block, and the end of the try block is 23, and I can just say W that to uh, desktop um, temp.php. And that's just saved that portion of the file. We're still in, we're still in the same file. If I press Control and G, it tells me that I'm in index and it's modified. Um, but in addition, we have on the desktop the file that I just saved. Oops. So just that portion of that file. So um, I know you know you can just sort of get reset and stuff, and you know, but I'm a bit old school. I like to copy away bits before I change them sometimes. Um, so if I want to get out of all of those files, again Q A and exclamation mark will do it. Um, so Vim splits, um, having being able to edit multiple files at the same time, to have two files side by side. Um, to have the same file side by side and you know be looking at the top um, in on the left, for example, and the bottom half of it on the right. I find that useful. I find myself doing that a lot. So um, this is uh, actually uh, how a tennis court is laid out, uh, done in Vim, uh, to scale. Um, I'm quite proud of this. <laughs> I'm obviously uh, got too much time on my hands. And I've got some tennis players, and uh, they jig about a bit. And this guy on the right is going to serve, and he slips on the wet grass. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see this, but it says new over here. <laughs> um, uh, you know, tennis players can do the splits as well. Uh, this is me before I went grey and uh, grew a beard. Um, but they, not all tennis players can do splits in Vim. Which is a <laughs> so uh, where are we now? We are in themes. So if I open up those, oh, I didn't show you. So you can, yeah, sorry, it's those are things I'm thinking of. So if you like tabs at the top of your files, you can do this sort of stuff as well, and you can have a more traditional kind of view where you can tab to the files. Was that the dash P? The, the dash P. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I just forget that you can't see right. what's going on down here. Yeah. Really sorry. Um, so, um, so for example, we can see, actually, I'm just going to quit out here, quit all, and just open those files without the dash P. So, 
as I showed you before, colon ls will list the files that I've got kind of loaded in memory. And um, so, 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 for example, I want to have a look at the vertical tab CSS as well. I can type vertical split buffer and give it a number. And that will um, give me these two files side by side. So I've got edit CSS on the left and vertical tabs on the right. Um, if I'm on, so here I'm on uh, edit CSS, if I just want to um, have a view of this file top, um, I, you know, so I've got, I can just go to the bottom of the file by pressing capital G. So I'm at the bottom of the file at this window, the split at the bottom and the top of the file at the top. You might find that useful. Um, I do use that quite a, quite a bit. Um, and yeah, and you can just keep splitting. Uh, so we can, I'm not going to, but you saw, you saw the tennis court before. And if you ever end up with that kind of thing on going on your screen, you're working on a complex project, it's probably time to get up and go and have a cup of coffee or um, take a break or something. But, uh, but you can make tennis courts in BIM. Um, okay, so I think, sorry? So it swings it for me, to be honest. <laughs> 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 um, so I appreciate this probably not being the easiest talk to sit through, and I'm sorry, uh, you know, the sort of issues a little bit beyond my control. Um, but I have an idea, um, and um, I'd like to talk about it. Uh, um, so I want to start a bin club. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I want to start a BIM club, and um, you know, I, I've got this book. Um, I'm not an expert, but someone who is an expert has written a book about BIM, and it's brilliant. I'm going to give, you know, we're going to do a little raffle in a minute. Um, but I, you know, I'd like to share, you know, in a more, I don't know, there must be a better way of sharing, sort of, you know, helping people to get into BIM. Maybe a Google Hangout or something, or perhaps I can drive to your house. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but you know, um, you know, maybe just a, a half an hour. Google Hangout or something uh, once a week or once a month or something. Um, there is a BIM uh, user group in London. Uh, it's a bit far for me to travel, but if you're in London, there's a very good group. And they, they put their slides online. I've got a link to that in a minute. Um, but if you would, you know, if there's anything, if I haven't entirely put you off BIM for life, you weren't already put off enough, um, I'd like to invite you to join my BIM club as long as you don't talk about it. Um, you, might just have to, you might just have to let me know that you want to be in the club. <laughs> so, um, if you need a man who uh, knows how to get things, um, I've got some resources for you. So, things I haven't covered, um, like colon help, you might need some help to learn how to use BIM's help, but that's how you get to help in BIM, uh, colon help. Um, if you type BIM tutor in the terminal and you've got BIM installed, uh, most likely it will launch BIM Tutor, which is, which is a great way of getting through <laughs> the basics. Um, Vimcast sees Drew's um, excellent. Vimcast is brilliant, I, I have to say. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's free. You can just go and watch lots of screencasts about how to be going in BIM. And it's, it, it just has a way of explaining things much more elegantly than I do. Um, there's a link to his book. I'd encourage you to buy it if you don't win this copy today. There's a link to Vim London. That tells me I'm probably out of time. Um, learn Vim by playing a game. Now, some, some of the levels are paid for, but that's uh, it's good fun. You can have some fun on there before you need to get your credit card out. Vim Golf. I've never actually played Vim Golf, but the idea is, is that you pick a sort of a, an editing challenge and you do it in the least keystrokes. Um, Yanis. <laughs> I really don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's a BIM distribution that kind of, um, you know, kind of, kind of sets you up uh, out of the box with kind of the more sort of feature, you know, the kind of features that you're used to with a with an IDE. Um, and then there's the Drupal BIM RC project again. I I didn't have time to try this out. I'm really sorry, but I will let you know uh, whether it works for me. Um, and then. Uh, uh, page on configuring BIM for Drupal development, and there's my, my configuration files, and uh, me on Twitter, and then, you know, push 
but you know, if you're interested in being pub, let me know. Um, Why do you? <laughs> Come and whisper in my ear at the end. So I haven't seen any. Are we? What? Um, we yeah, we've got uh, we've about three minutes for questions. Oh, three minutes for questions. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I need help getting out of gym. Help. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you um, press escape. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not getting anything with escape. Okay. So if you hit escape, and then can you hit uh, colon Q? Uh, so, oh, so that will quit whatever other mode you go into? Or? Yes, it, okay. it, it's just the universe working out of what <coughs> gotcha. you've got into. Yeah, it's escape is always the first port of call, or control C uh, if you find that easier. Some, you know, the escape key is right up on the left, but control C is a bit more natural. Um, and then, you know, colon, quit. Yeah. Auto computing, I mean, a lot of SDKs will have, like, yeah. you know, you type slash star star and it will create a documentation yeah. block with your parameters. Yes, uh, uh, BIM support snippets, the idea of snippets, um, uh, and auto completion as well. So it has a really nice, I've run out of time, but you know, you could in you can type a word and it will auto complete uh, by finding occurrences of the same word in the document or bit above you or document below you, you can specify. Um, there's uh, auto complete plugins, the, there is um, you know uh, snippet uh, snippets as a plugin for BIM. And can snippets be like Dynamic, so it can read a function or a method and, exactly. and it pull the, the name of the parameters up into the box. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All of that. All of that. I didn't have time to demonstrate yeah. multi cursors. <laughs> uh, Dave, we were talking about Sublime yesterday. Yeah. It has it. I got it installed in, and it took about five hours last night. <laughs> <laughs> five minutes. Five minutes. I got it installed, and it works beautifully. It's, a, it's lovely. Um, so uh, that's it. I, I, I'm going to be around for. I'm going to enjoy the remaining 15 minutes of the camp if you relax now. <laughs> um, so if you've got any questions um, or if you want to join me, you know, uh, let me know. Um, the raffle I'll do very quickly. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, I'll just refresh this and hopefully. Oh my life! Has anybody, anybody got internet? And just tell me if. Who the names of the people are. I think it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just me. And it's a raffle, isn't it? It's not bingo. Yeah. What I'm calling it. Um, so I know there was the Eli, there was Jane. Do you want to shout your names out? Jan. 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 Anybody else? Karen. Karen. Lewis. Karen. Lewis. <laughs> Lewis. Oh, no. Karen. Q. Colin Q, exclamation What? Who? Finn. Finn. Emma. Spartacus. <laughs> Two N's. Jenny. <laughs> Jenny and Margaret. End. Anybody else? Right. Andrew. Lewis. Lewis, have we got Lewis? You will tell me if I put you in twice, won't you? <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Neil, I'm glad we haven't got any people with the same names. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew? Dave. Who? Dave. Dave? Dave. Um, I wish I put Rachel in there. Rachel. Rachel. Am I got it right? Rachel? Yes. K -L. Yeah. Anybody Sue. else? Sue? Sue? Any more? Freddie Moore? <coughs> Eric. <Michael>. Eric? <laughs> Aaron. Aaron. Sorry? Aaron. Aaron. No? Yes? Paul. Paul. What's Paul? Paul. Anybody else? No. Sorry? Tom. 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 Mark, should I take your name out or see at the back there? I know you're... Yeah. Anybody else before we do the raffle? Okay. Source. Code. Raffle. It's not there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you save that list? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all right. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for. Um... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And is it been raffled? Oh, this is embarrassing. I'm really sorry. You're not doing anything this evening, are you? <laughs> 
Right, okay, so I have a script here, and you can check the source code out on. It's not mine, it's Drew's. Um, so it will pick uh, a name out at random when I uh, call uh, raffle. So are you ready? Do you want to do a bit of a drum roll? Thanks for coming. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris.